1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. Neil Young, of course. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey, man. And we are ready to rock. The studio is filled right now. Everyone's uh, kind of mingling around and Look at this. hanging and, eat, and eating uh, Ralph Dutour's, uh cookies. I guess. Say, yeah, say hi to Ralph. Congrats on your first day. Thank you, thank you. Is this the right one? Yeah, yeah. that's the right one. Wow. Yes, thank you, Mrs. T. She sent the cookies. I must the say, of the first uh, show today. I must say, we are finally moving forward here at NEW. Yes, we very, are. Very, very excited at the uh, hiring of Ralph Detour, a guy I grew up listening to. You were co-workers, <laughs> weren't you? We were co-workers for many years. I'm very, very happy with this hire, I must say, because we're bitching about everything else around here. Are you allowed to say the other call letters or no? Oh, yeah, we say BAB every, oh, okay. every once in yeah. a while. Yeah. So For the Long Island contingency. Yes. Hey, they're not, like, thinking about Bucky Buckman for mornings here, are they? <laughs> no, I, I got to draw the... We got to draw the line somewhere. No, it, For crying out loud. No, it ends with... <laughs> it, ends with it, ends, it ends with Ralph, but... Uh, I used to cut school and check out Ralph on the radio and stuff. Yeah. When I was just a punk. I'm still a punk. Yeah, 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 what, are, what are you talking about? about? I'm still a punk, but at least I got a job now, but... I just want to welcome Ralph. I'm serious. Yeah, I'm nice. so excited. Sandy's like, what's wrong with you? Because I took my lunch and I sat in front of my stereo cranking up Ralph today. She goes, you never listen to any W when you're not on it. like, shut up. I'm going to start listening now because I'm excited once again. Well, it is good. We're moving forward. The the papers are still printing um, that uh, the three people are upset about Dave and uh, Scott. Oh, you want to start with that, Dave? Gone. Well, yeah. We had a bunch of articles over the weekend. A bunch. They, about... they just can't stop writing about Opie and Anthony for oh, some no. reason. It's interesting. Just keep uh, writing about us. Make sure you get our names right. That's all we care about. This is my favorite. David Hinckley, who uh, writes for the Daily News. God, we got to call him because I am convinced this is a joke. It's got to be a joke. It has to be. It has to be, yes. Let's see. A couple of the notes that came here on former NEW DJ Scott Muni and Dave Herman, two longtime voices of New York radio cut loose by the station on November 13th. These are letters from Tom's River, New Jersey. I guess Scott and Dave are fired because they were deemed too old to rock and roll. If that's so, how come no one told the old jocks over at CBS FM? <laughs> Can we start there? Um, because CBS FM is an oldie station. Yes. So if there's old jocks over there, Ron Lundy, CBS FM, hello, love. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But when you're trying to rock and get an attitude here like NEW used to have, you can't have that. And, and, and let's just uh, put it straight here. It, they weren't fired because they were old. They were fired because they didn't do anything in the ratings for many, many years. Right. We live and die by the ratings in the radio world. That's how it works. Uh, continuing. Anyway, I stopped listening to NEW when they brought in those two jerks, Opie and Dopey. Oh, you got me. Oh. This is interesting. I'm Dopey this time. Yeah. Usually it's Dopey and Anthony, but this time it's Opie and Dopey. Can I say, if you want to get to us, please don't use the Opie and Dopey or Dopey and, you know, not funny and all yeah. that stuff. Come it, up with something better. Yeah, because it doesn't bother us. We've heard it before. Come up with something that'll make us chuckle. Right. Uh, who wants to listen to two Howard Stern wannabes? Or Howard Stern himself, for that matter. Well, I think... Uh, a uh, hell of a lot of people listen to Howard. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Okay. Uh, you know, as well as I do, that Scott Muni pioneered the very format Howie Baby claims is his domain. No. Howie ought to kiss Scott's butt. Scott was in the rock format, and Howard Stern is in the talk format. So, William... This guy's talking at his ass. William Hayer is, uh, yes, from Tom's River, New Jersey, is speaking out of his ass, yes. And then we go on to Cedarhurst. I'm 80 years old. This is real. And I've listened to NEW for 40 years, probably longer. No more. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I used to put my radio on at 7 a.m., but I turned it off in the afternoon because I can't stand those two idiots. Who, who is she talking about? Us. Oh, I thought maybe it was Ralph. And, uh... <laughs> no, it's us, huh? Yeah. Give Ralph some time. <laughs> I don't listen to Howard Stern or Imus either. I just don't appreciate their humor. I guess it's my age. But bring back Scott Muni and Dave Herman. Evelyn Scow, Cedarhurst. 80-year-old lady writing a letter to David Hinckley and he prints it. Yeah, David should know that. We're not going for 80-year-old listeners here at NEW. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we, we really were trying for that lucrative 80-year-old women uh, rating. <laughs> So we can uh, tell sales they could start buying up those depend undergarment spots. Yeah, does Arbitron even rate 80 plus? <laughs> I don't think so. No, they don't. <laughs> so I don't know what, we, what he was getting at. I don't know what David was getting at by printing these, uh, these letters. Are these maybe the only letters he got mm -hmm. about the subject? Mm -hmm. uh, were there any more uh, people that are relevant to, this, to the 20th century? Than these people, right? I don't know. Maybe if, we ought to talk to because uh, if David, because if David wants complaint letters, we could hand them a, a ton of uh, oh yeah letters that are much better than the ones he printed. I think he was going for the ones that uh, were pro Scott and Dave, right, and anti Opie and Anthony. Yeah. So the only way you're going to get those really are from the 80 year olds because <laughs> I think everyone else realized it was time to move on here, right, at this station. Hence Ralph Tator, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Okay. And what, did we get screwed for the Joe DiMaggio thing, too? Yeah, that was in today's paper, and I don't know. We were in the paper all weekend long, so. Apparently, everyone isn't rooting for Joe DiMaggio. On Opie and Anthony's F.U. Friday show, someone made Joe D. the subject of that wish, triggering a round of Marilyn Monroe jokes from the host. It was a Met fan that said, F. Joe DiMaggio, because he's clinging to life, he's dying, he's alive, he's... He's passed out. He's playing poker. <laughs> you know, he's, the news he's up. He's helping out fellow patients. Right. He's down. He's dead. He's and the comment we said was, you know, he's in a rundown between life and death. That's all we said. And and uh, that's no different than the papers. The Yankee Clipper rallying in the late innings. Right. And they're saying the same thing in the newspapers, printing that stuff. Yeah, the Daily News is trashing us for talking about Joe DiMaggio. They already got Joe DiMaggio's obituary wrote, and they're just oh, waiting to course. print it. So don't of course. yourself, please. All right, any other press you want to talk about? Now we got lawyers upstairs talking about Friday show. <laughs> just, it's just a mess around here. That but. was a mess. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. It's Opie and Anthony. If you want to send a fax into the show, 212 957 WNEW. I should just read a couple here, Anthony. Okay, it's Opie and Anthony. What a Sunday for New York football fans. Oh, please. Two of the best games in a long time. Could it be the Jets heading for a division title? First one since 1969. Let's keep our fingers crossed. And no matter how bad the Giants' season might be, they still. Beat the Broncos, go New York. Let's hear it for both teams. Where's Opie's $100, Anthony? All right, I'll give you $100, but I got something to say. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Anthony, where's Opie's $100? They're coming in like crazy. Screw uh, the Giants, what for you, God's sake. What do you mean, screw Big Blue? No, this is my personal opinion. Well, can I tell First of all, they, they suck all, all season, and now they decide that they got a, a play against Denver? Well, let me first start by saying I am more of a Jets fan than a Giants fan. Mm -hmm. But on Friday, I did say that uh, the Giants would e easily cover the spread and would possibly beat the Broncos Big for the blue. biggest upset of the season. Big blue. Big blow. You didn't believe me. You bet me $100. I win. I want my money. All right. Don't worry about <laughs> it. I don't Welsh. And what's your problem with uh, Big Blue? They played a well, great game yesterday. Oh, wh why can't they do that uh, uh, consistently? I'll tell you why. Because they, they decide because all the uh, hype and pressure about playing an undefeated team that now they're going to decide to play. Now it's important. I'll tell. Why didn't they do it from the beginning, Opie? I'll tell you why. Okay, go ahead. Okay, a lot of people out there think the Giants have a really bad team. Mm -hmm. They don't have a bad team. They have right. a horrible offense in general. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have a very, very good defense. Mm -hmm. The problem this year is that the defense for Big Blue has spent a lot of time on the field. And their opponents pretty much wear out the defense and finally start scoring. Because the Giants can't get anything going offensively this year. They're like the little, like the Gorky kid that, that wrecks it for the, the real athletes. What do you mean? Oh, come on. Denver going on their way to be undefeated, and, and, and the, 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 the crapola team has to beat them. Wait, you wanted that horse tooth uh, quarterback to go undefeated this year? I didn't want the Giants to beat him. No Giants one, didn't deserve to. Uh, no to, one in New York him. wants to see John Elway have an undefeated season. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Anthony. Giants didn't deserve to beat them. They, they played like... The, uh, played. They played a great game yesterday. Yeah, so it proves that. that they could play a good game. You're just bitter because you lost $100. Oh, please. Now, my team, the Jets, looked yeah. fantastic last night. 
Very good. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. excited for uh, them going up to Buffalo and kicking the Bills' ass and winning a division. <laughs> What? <laughs> Nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. It, it could I'm happen. I'm so happy for you. All I ask is uh, if Bill Parcells could just put away that stupid uh, timing pattern play that he likes to do. Really? You know the timing pattern play to the corner of the end zone? No, I wasn't familiar with that, Opie. Seriously? I'm sorry. No, just... I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I, I, do you care or... Or do you care, or you want me to just to move on? I, I don't know. I, ba basically, I it's, pay you money, so I don't feel very good. I don't get. Basically, it's a play where Vinny, you know, steps back mm -hmm. and just tosses it to the corner of the end zone. Okay. While both, you know, guys are running, it's it's called a, a timing pattern. Right. Okay? It doesn't work. And yesterday <laughs> they threw it again and they got intercepted, and I, and I was just very frustrated because the week uh, prior to that uh, they tried it two or three times. It doesn't work. Get rid of it. I don't. I personally don't uh, think that was a giant touchdown yesterday either. Oh my! Um, I saw Shut the. Up. I saw the official come in and he waved it off. Shut up, Mister. And then Magoo. somebody else had to come in, another official, and and give him the touchdown. I personally. Ah. Uh, no, I. You I, saw I, the replay, right? I saw the whole thing at first. I'm like, yeah, that's no touchdown. <laughs> that screw him. That is not a touchdown. And but, then I see the replay. and It's like. All right, that is so a touchdown. But at right. that point, you were losing the hundred dollars because they were going to cover the point spread. I didn't know. Who right. knows? They can't even hold on to a ball. I thought maybe uh, they could have. Uh... And before we finish our sports break here, yeah, Mets signing Ricky Henderson. What? <sighs> who's really excited about this? Ricky ought to keep his mouth shut and count his blessings. He, he's already saying, you know, they're better than better, the, the Yankees. The Mets are better than the Yankees. People, that's what uh, he's saying. Now, let me tell you another thing here. I'm more of a Mets fan than a Yankees fan. I think this Ricky Henderson signing is stupid. You got to shut up. Did people forget that his average drastically dropped to like 230 last year? The guy can't hit anymore. Yeah. He could still run like a mother. Okay? Like a what? Mother. Okay? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> oh, H. Yeah. Oh, Huck. Mother. Okay? Oh, okay. He could still run. But you want to Earl's, get a Earl's job in stupid, another city. Right? Met signing Ricky, stupid. Um, not bright. Not bright. Thank you. It's well, well I, I thought you were going off a little more about it uh, earlier when I heard you uh, saying, uh, uh, telling me about Ricky saying that uh, the Mets are better than the Yankees. What did you say? He's on drugs. They're not a pimple on... They're not the beginnings of a pimple on the Yankees' ass. <laughs> wow. 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 Earl. Dems fighting words. Earl, huge, huge Yankee fan. And, and uh, they gave Ricky Henderson uh, Willie Mays' number. Yeah. I'm a little ticked off of that. Now, granted, Willie Mays had a couple of really bad years with the Mets, <laughs> but it's still Willie Mays. Yeah. And only one other guy since Mays retired wore the number, and it was like a fluke or something. The guy wore it for half a season or something stupid, and that was part of Ricky's demands that he wanted his 24. So have fun with your little number 24, Ricky. <laughs> God, it's just a stupid, stupid trade. Well, stay tuned for more of Mike and the Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, this whole town is excited right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Both teams look great. Both football oh. teams look great uh, over the weekend. Giants. <laughs> Hundred dollars. I mean, they prove they can beat a team like Denver. What the hell happened then the rest of the year? It was going to happen. It was so much pressure. They could play like that all the time. I don't want to hear it. A Anthony, it was going to happen eventually because they have a very good defense. They get their offense figured out in the, uh, the off season. They're going to have a pretty good uh, team next year. It takes all the hype for them to perform. Perform uh, before the hype. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> he just ticked that he lost 100. The Rock of New York. 1027 WNEW, that's the latest from Kenny, Wayne Shepherd, and old Dylan song. Everything is broken. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey, man. Rocking and rolling here. Yeah. And uh, we, we were talking on the way in, and we both uh, got rooked into getting our Christmas trees uh, today. Well, it's, it's Christmas, Opie. <sighs> it's Christmas time. You have to go out and get everything. Yeah. You know, get you. I was supposed to do it yesterday, but um, that wasn't happening. A little hungover. Well, I went to brunch. Went to a, a those brunches where you pay, uh, you know, ten bucks for the food and the bill comes and you drink a hundred dollars of booze, <laughs> bloody marys and mimosas and <laughs> yeah. So uh, we were supposed to get the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Went to brunch, and then uh, I just looked at Jen and said, "No, 
Ain't happening. Can't get the tree. Not happening. Mm. So you did can't it today? Get the tree. Won't get the tree. Too drunk to see. Can't get the tree. <laughs> I was a mess. <laughs> Yeah, so we got it today. Well, I, I got it yesterday, and uh, I don't know. I probably should have tied it on the top of the car. <laughs> what do you mean? What happened? I got a sports truck. I'm like, hey, man, put the seats down, throw it in the back. Let's go. I didn't want to wait around. So many needles in my car. Oh, you, you put it on top. I know. I guess that's the whole deal. You put it on top, and you tie it down. I couldn't be bothered. I was like, just throw it in the back of my car. We're out of here. Don't you have a rack on top, too? Yeah, I do. So you, you barely even have to tie it. I, you're right. Oh. What can I tell you? thought I could get away with it. See? Pulled the damn thing out. Maybe I got a bad tree, because there's so many needles in my car right now. That's you. That's you and your car. Yeah. Now it's going to have pine needles in it. Yes. See, we we get in these arguments. Uh, Opie eats in my car, and I hate it. He eats in his car, and now he puts trees in there, and there's needles all over. I tied the tree to my roof. Well, let me tell so you. So as not to get needles Wait, inside. Let me tell you something. I was buying uh, sports utility trucks way before they became passe. Passe? No, I mean, not passe. Way before they became popular. Sorry. Right. Wrong word. And uh, I used my sports utility truck for what it was built for. You throw the stuff in the back, and you and you go four wheeling, and you go skiing. But the tree can go on top. I guess you're right. Oh, well, I put the tree on top, Opie, because yeah. my fifty dollar tree stand was in the back. <laughs> what? What did you buy? Well, over the past few years, I've had quite a difficult time with tree stands. First, I went with the red and green metal one that you remember when you were a kid. Oh, with the green arms? Yeah. Uh, I, I've, I, little, I, yeah, I'm past that stage. That thing's a nightmare. And, and, and you can never get it straight. It mm. never stands up straight. Is it straight? Straight, hunt. Okay, you lean away, and it's it's tilted. Yeah. And then you try to pull it, and the water in there lasts for three minutes. Right, and uh, when you use that stand, you got to, like, use the rope to tie it to doors and stuff. <laughs> you do, though. <laughs> Secure it. It's going to yeah. fall over. Yeah, exactly. So, last year. I, I throw that one away, and I get the big green one that fits like a gallon of water. It's got these big screws that screw right into the okay, tree. Okay, that's the one I got. What was the problem with that? Well, the screws... It's a, it's a heavy base. You could get a lot of water in. The screws are kind of a pain to screw into the tree. You know what? But if if it, It's going to lean over on you. The damn thing is going to tip over on you. Did you get it straight up and down? It looked pretty straight. And, and, oh, it looked pretty straight. <laughs> yeah. You wait. Oh, God. So I got uh, talked into getting this stand. How much did the tree stand cost? Let's Fifty a... bucks. <laughs> Fifty dollars for a tree stand. You gotta be lying. This thing. What could this thing do that it's worth fifty dollars? Well, Opie, <laughs> you you put this where the 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 stem of the tree goes. Mm -hmm. You 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 put it into this big round unit that has these gear looking things on it. Gears. Then you pop it into the tree stand, and it swivels up, and you can adjust it uh, uh, till it's straight. So it's kind of locked in place with like a ball bearing type of thing. It's this big, yeah, ball joint with gears on it. All right, it's like got teeth on it. And then you move it until you, where you yeah, you go and get it straight, and then you push this pedal, and it locks it in place. <laughs> so it's straight up and down. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. How did I make in so many years without the $50 tree stand? Now, did you see the advertisement for the tree stand after brunch yesterday or before brunch? That's all I want to know. Oh, maybe that's <laughs> Yeah. I, we, we it just sounds like it. one of those late night gadgets, you say. Discussed it during brunch. You got talked into the $50 tree stand. Cute. After some absolute... Uh... Your tree stand costs more than your tree at this point. Yeah. I hey, you're right. And I can't wait for the tree stand to go bad and you come in here and pitch and complain. Because you know it's going to happen. I bought a $50 tree stand. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't really think about it till now. What's wrong with you? I'm in the tree. All right. Well, we, oh. now the tree's just kind of there. I, I don't know when I'm going to decorate it. Nah, I don't know. You know, one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> You left it out on the porch or something for a, a whole night? Yeah. Without water? Yeah. Oh, good. Those needles will be falling off in a week. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I only need it to last, what? What are we down to, 10 days? And I haven't started my Christmas shopping yet, Craig. Right? All right. I don't. I only need it to last 10 days. I'm not one of these people that keep it up until February. Oh, that's me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Christmas is over. Let's get the damn tree out of the house and move on with our <laughs> lives. And 
and make believe we had a great Christmas. I like having a fire hazard in the living room. <laughs> Months. You're the guy, you take it out in early February, and there's <laughs> just not thousands upon thousands of needles. Need from where it was standing all the way to the front door where you dragged it out, right? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Oh, man. Anthony, Pepsi One. I see you got a bottle of it in your hand there. I was brought a uh, bottle of this. Now, one thing I think you know about me, I drink a lot of soda. I hate diet soda. So when I was handed this, I'm like, all right, let me taste it. Huh? Here, watch. He's tasting the, the Pepsi One. <laughs> doesn't taste like diet soda. Really? It doesn't. Now, I, I grew up with my mother uh, with a refrigerator full of diet soda, and I used to steal it. I'm like, God, oh, let me drink this. For your Jack? And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was 12. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Sorry. It was horrible because it had uh, saccharin in it. This doesn't have saccharin, no sugar. It's a brand new sweetener, Pepsi One. And, and it, it tastes like regular cola. Uh, yeah, it doesn't taste like a Pepsi soda at all, huh? It doesn't taste like diet. It tastes like regular cola. Okay. I like it. And no other soft drink has this new sweetener, I'm told? No. Wow. It's special. It's very special. Yes. I see you're just about done with that Pepsi one there, so I you am. must be enjoying it. Because you drink about three or four sodas per show. I do. And it's never diet because diet sodas always taste horrendous. Okay. They have that aftertaste. <sighs> but this, uh, it tastes like... Cola. Okay. Tastes like Pepsi. Anthony, cigars around the world. The original Cigar of the Month Club, huh? This is a great idea for Christmas. You don't want to go trudging around the malls. It's uh, crowded. You can't park. You could do this by phone or website if you have a cigar aficionado that you know or somebody that you think might like cigars for uh, Christmas. To be honest, I don't smoke a lot of cigars, mm -hmm. but if someone gave this to me this holiday season, I'd be pretty stoked. I'd yeah. be like, wow, this is kind of cool. And for only twenty four ninety five per month, plus shipping, Cigars Around the World sends five fresh hand-rolled cigars, a smoking newsletter, free cigar cutter, gift card, and more. And they offer you, like, two to 12-month memberships. They're available. You just give them a call. 1-800-FRESH-66. You know what I tried this weekend? I tried uh, one of their um, Maker's Mark bourbon Oh, that was the one that... Cigars, okay. yeah. Yeah, it came sealed. I felt like, uh, felt like a bigwig. <laughs> After losing my shirt with uh, Zoom.com in the stock market, I felt like a real stock market bigwig. You felt like a player. Yeah, I was a player I just, for a minute. I just smoked your big fat cigar. Yes. And was it good, seriously? It was good. Awesome, okay. Cigars around the world, give them a call. 1-800-FRESH-66. 1027-WNEW, the rag of New York. The waitresses, Christmas wrapping. Got to play that every year, I guess, huh? It's a tradition. Yes. As long as we're not playing the Happy Hanukkah song by Adam Sandler. Oh, no. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, uh, Hanukkah. Say, yeah, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Well, a little Christmas controversy here at uh, the radio station, Opie. What do you mean? Well, um, obviously, uh, I don't think everybody knows, but WINS wins. 1010 Wins News is upstairs from us. We got to meet the gang at our Christmas party Friday. Yes, we did. Hi, <laughs> I'm from 1010 Wins. <laughs> this is my friend Bob. Bob. And, and they can only talk to us in 10 minute intervals. What was that all about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you give us 22 minutes. <laughs> I'll tell you my life. <laughs> it was cool to meet him, you know. Heard all the people, you know. I'll be talking to you at the bar on the ones. <laughs> on the ones. <laughs> yeah, every every five minutes, someone had to leave and another guy had to come up. <laughs> Hi, now with the financial report. <laughs> like, hey, wow, you guys are cool. It was great to meet them. And then the boss introduces us to the whole staff because yeah. a lot of the, the wins people uh, want to know what we look like. Oh, my God. They want to know what the a-holes look like, basically. Yeah, that was pretty much it. He's on mic yeah. on the dance floor. Yeah. Uh, we had our party, a uh, Christmas party, and he goes, I want to bring uh, Opie and Anthony down so everybody can see what they look like. Mm -hmm. Say a couple of words. Mm -hmm. I uh, told everybody at Wins that I love their traffic on the ones. Yes. And they appreciated that. Yes. Got a little got a little applause yes. for the Anthony. Mm -hmm. Then I give Opie the mic. And what did you say, Opie? Too bad the traffic is never accurate. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all like, oh. It's, then the whole night, people are coming up to me going, oh, I love your show. Uh, Boy, you're the you're the nice one. I hate that Opie. What was he saying about our traffic? I don't think they take it seriously. That's their that's what they do. That's their whole gig. That they're, they're they're New York. Yeah. 
up there wins. They, they, if the news happens and, and traffic and wet, they, they know it. They then, tell it, and you're, and you're goofing on them. And then our boss, Scott Herman, put me in a really bad position. I thought I was going to get fired at the Christmas party. You hear the horror stories every year that people get fired at the Christmas party and stuff. Yeah. He looks at me and you know gives me the mic again and says, Oh, uh, I, I bet you're wondering how many people are part of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club in the room. And and I'm, you're talking like there's wives and husbands. Yeah. Everyone's dressed up. You know, Obviously, a lot of the people are just simply not into what you and I do. Yeah, and I'm like, boss, why would you have to do that? So I turn around and go, actually, boss, everyone wants to know if you're a member of the Tuesday Night Hover Club. I know. And all of a sudden, the whole place was like, ooh. Oh. Did, did, did he just say that? But I was just talking to him. How could he get fired so <laughs> Oh, no. And, and then the boss drastically changed the subject and said, okay, it's time to dance or whatever, and we moved on. But uh, Yes, we did. We were a big hit at the Christmas party. <laughs> it was fun. I liked meeting all those people. Yeah, it, it, it was great uh, meeting uh, Carol Miller's six foot eight husband who... Wow, he's tall. ...who looked at me the whole night like he wanted to kill me. Well... our little controversy a couple months back, but... Uh, well... Nice guy. Yeah, it's always fun to, to meet the people that you trash at the holiday party. Oh, <laughs> it was just brutal. But there's a little controversy here now in the building, upstairs. Uh, there's a little nativity scene on one of the tables up there, and now it's stirring up controversy. Why? I don't know. It's like this whole thing going on. You can't put a nativity scene, and, and I think there's even a menorah up there representing Hanukkah. And and there's still a problem, because I don't think Kwanzaa is represented. Is that what the problem is, you think? I think so. Well, let's get one of those Kwanzaa Afro trees, then. Is that what... <laughs> what? What is the... Because you got the menorah for Hanukkah. Yeah. You got the nativity scene or a little Christmas tree for uh, Christmas. Yeah. What's Kwanzaa? I think it's like a little Afro bush. The chia head? Yeah, like a like chia, that, like a chia pet or something. You grow the chia head afro or a bonsai tree that you just shape into an afro. I think that's what they do for Kwanzaa. Oh, is that it? I think so. I wasn't sure. I didn't know if there was a uh, an ornament that you could lay out that would represent Kwanzaa. I'm not hearing as much of about Kwanzaa this year as I did in years past. What yeah. happened? I don't know. I don't is know it losing steam? That. Maybe someone could explain that to us. Kwanzaa. Ah, 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 ah. Our, our African American listeners, maybe they could explain that to us. Yeah. Where's, where's Earl? Does Earl like? Uh, yeah, where's Earl? Where's Earl could maybe enlighten us on Kwanzaa. I didn't even think of that because I don't consider Earl a black man. Does Earl celebrate Kwanzaa? Hey, Earl. I, where's Earl? All right, well, we've got to celebrate Kwanzaa. We'll find Earl and, and get to the bottom of that. Yeah, Earl is white. Earl's white. He yells down the hall. <laughs> Earl is white. <laughs> He's the whitest black man you'll ever meet in your life. That is the truth. All right, so the controversy. <laughs> so what are they going to do? I don't know. Maybe they'll have to get rid of it. Are, why? Because that's how it works. Here's Earl. Hey, Earl, what's up? How Earl. are you, bro? Uh, what's, what's up with Kwanzaa? Is it still a big thing? I have no idea. In the community? Kwanzaa. You don't? Not at all. What do you celebrate? Christmas. Christmas? Yeah. Does the rest of the gang in the hood uh, celebrate Kwanzaa, though? <laughs> no. You don't catch all the crap like, yo, my brother, what you doing, man? You what? Don't, don't <laughs> celebrate the holiday of the devil, man. What you doing? Get on board with the Hill. Kwanzaa, man. Oh, you live, I live in Forest, Forest Hills. Hills. <laughs> You're the whitest black man alive. Forest boy, Hills. Boy, you got to get up with Kwanzaa, man. What you <laughs> doing with that white man's holiday? Now, do you know what Kwanzaa's all about, Earl? Not a clue. No clue. Quite honestly, no. We're trying to find out if they have, like, a Kwanzaa Afro uh, bush thing. I don't think so, no. Do they decorate anything? Yeah, there's got to be some kind of ornament. I think it's more of a clothing thing. Is it like that big hat, like that straight up and down hat made out of that bamboo stuff? <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> Ooh, my door lock snapped down when I see that hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't know nothing about Kwanzaa? Not really, no. Sad, sad but true. Okay. Oh, well, well, you know something? We ought to enlighten ourselves a little bit. Yeah, we'll listen to what Kwanzaa is all about. Give us a call. Yeah. I know there's certain um, like st like uh, uh, things. There, there are these ideals that Kwanzaa is based on. Mm -hmm. I believe there are seven. Seven? Yes. But I'm not sure. Maybe someone can enlighten us seven. on Kwanzaa. All right. Are there any Kwanzaa songs? <laughs> yeah, we can, maybe we can make up a Kwanzaa song. 
<laughs> oh, God. That could be fun. <laughs> yeah. Anthony, good news. Our listeners came to the rescue, and I found a Kwanzaa song. You did. Thought it would be only fair to play a Kwanzaa song, because we're playing all these all these Christmas songs today. Okay. So would you like to hear our Kwanzaa song? I don't know where you found it, but yeah. Oh, okay. I like big fucks and I can't even fly. <laughs> Now, now, what are you doing? I like big butts and I can't even fly. It's a Kwanzaa song. I don't think that is. You sure? I don't know much about Kwanzaa. I'm waiting for somebody to enlighten us about Kwanzaa, but I, I wouldn't think this would be a Kwanzaa song. <laughs> All right, sorry. We'll keep trying to find a Kwanzaa song for you. For the fine folks. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, the latest from the Goo Goo Dolls that slide off their CD, Dizzy Up the Girl. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey, man. For your Monday, phone's a little slow. Every Monday, the phones and the faxes are a little slow. Well, people have to uh, recoup, I think, from the weekend. I guess I understand that. But Get that work done on Monday that they blew off on Friday. Yeah. Well, there's certain things. I understand that, but we try to pump out a lot of energy on Mondays and make believe it's like uh, a Friday show. That's all right. So, well, if you want to add something, though, you can. Tax yeah. lines, 212-957-WNEW. What do you got over there, Anthony? Well, Opie, uh, we were talking a little bit about the holidays. Um, Christmas, we have our uh, Christmas tree and um, nativity scene. Hanukkah has the menorah. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering what Kwanzaa has. Yes. And we don't understand Kwanzaa all that well. No. I, I seem to know there are seven principles of Kwanzaa. Don't they have like seven candles or something like yes. that? Kind of like the Hanukkah thing? Yes. So I, I'm hitting the computer and I'm trying to research a little bit All right. and see what these principles are. And I can't. I found a couple. So if you bear with me, here's... Wait, these are the principles of uh, Excuse Kwanzaa. Excuse me while I whip this out. Yeah, that's, that's one. That's one of the principles? Yeah, here's another. Hey, where are the white women at? There's another one. I, I think this is the Kwanzaa site. <laughs> right? No? So it's based on seven principles, and you have found two thus far. Can I hear the first one again? Because I talked over it. Okay. All right. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> All right. And this one. I got to look for the rest. Hey, where are the white women at? All right, so you got two. Interesting. You got two of the principles, and uh, you're looking for the other five. <laughs> Before someone kills me. <laughs> you're nuts. <laughs> All right. All right, man. <laughs> very nice, Anthony. Thank you very much. That was <laughs> no problem, Opie. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, do you have uh, what? Are we going to expose some of radio's uh, deepest, darkest secrets? Um, yeah, we could do that. You want to do it now or you want to wait? We could do it now, I guess. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, you ever see that Fox show where they expose the magician's tricks? Mm -hmm. And the guy wears the mask? Mm -hmm. Well, we're exposing radio secrets. Exposed! Because there's a bunch of uh, jocks out there that are lazy. They don't do their own stuff. Uh, they get things sent to them, mm -hmm. like scripts and, and CDs with bits on them. Yeah. And then they just play them like they're their own. I make believe it's their stuff. One thing, and then, uh, then there are jocks that'll just play like old comedy CDs, and yeah, yeah, and that's as creative as they get, and they think they're doing great radio stuff. So. Yeah, they do some kind of like you know funny five o'clock fun. Yeah, like that. Stuff. That's what, a package stupid thing. Yeah, let's let's play an old George Carlin record and make yeah. believe I'm funny and and uh, creative and entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Well, regardless, at least uh, there are a few people out there that that just do their own stuff. Like we a, like to do that, our own stuff. We try. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're successful and other times we fall on our face. We know that. But, but we're not going to take a prepackaged thing and say it's, you know, ours. Right. It's, it's terrible. Right. At least we try. Yeah, we'll give it a whirl. So with that said, um, there's a comedy service that's been, you know, trying to get us to sign up with their little service. And I, they just will not take no for an answer. First of all, because there's... I, there's no humor involved in this stuff <laughs> whatsoever. Terrible. And this comedy service is in every city in America, and they prepackage this stuff, and the morning show plays it, and it and will make believe that it's their stuff. Yeah, like they were up all night writing this and right. recording it. It'll be like a fake commercial or a fake song. Yeah. And, and you sit there at home, and some people will find it funny, and then they'll and then they'll take the credit for it. Yeah. All right. Well, with that said. Um, I got the latest uh, offering from this comedy service. Now, this is how a lot of these things work. They send you a CD with one half of a little scripted bit yeah. recorded on the CD. Yeah. And then there's gaps in between that guy's part where the DJ 
is supposed to interact yes. with the person. So then it makes it sound more real like they came right. up with it. Because now it's the guy's voice. Oh, my God. They, they must have done this themselves. Yes. No. Right. It is uh, a ruse. Right. A clever ruse. So we want to try doing some of their material on the air to show you how great it is and how funny it is. Let's see how it works. Opie. I mean, this is absolutely hysterical stuff. I can't understand why we don't want to sign up with them tomorrow, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this bit's called Barney the Red-Nosed Toady. I will be the announcer, and then I guess there's a Barney Fife character that is already pre-recorded. And, and everyone's supposed to think he's there in the studio with the Mr. DJ guy. Yeah, but his parts are on CD, and I'm going to do the announcer part uh, live. That's sent out all over the country for many other bad jocks to use. Uh, hundred, <laughs> hundreds, hundreds of stations do this <laughs> and think it's funny and, and it's creative. All right, let's see you do it. I want to see if you could pull this off. All right, so it's Barney the Red-Nosed Toady. Here we all go. Right. I start. <clears throat> Gee, I'm really in the Christmas spirit today. I feel full of the warm feeling of... Oh, hi, everybody! It's me! <laughs> oh, no, it's Barney. That's right. And I, I just had the barge in here today when I heard you talking how full of it you were. Uh, excuse me? You know, full of cheers. <laughs> You're stepping on him. Oh, oh right. Yeah, that's why I'm here, all right, to make your day a little brighter. If you know what I mean, wink, wink. Barney, <laughs> will you get to the point, please? Yeah, never. <laughs> I'm here today to introduce you to a lovable new character who's sure to brighten this special season and many holiday seasons in the future. Uh, Barney, I don't know what you're talking I'm about. I'm getting there. Hold your reindeers. <laughs> Didn't give you enough time. <laughs> All right, brother. Yes, great tradition of Santa Claus, Frosty, the Grinch, and all them other characters. Let me introduce you to someone sure to become an unforgettable Christmas icon. Hold on, I gotta put on my costume. You weren't supposed to talk there? Like, Barney, why are you putting that red rubber ball on your nose? Because now, I'm the lovable and unforgettable Barney, the red-nosed toady. What a fag. Barney, I mean... the red-nosed toady, loving everything you do. And if you want some wow. coffee, I will get a cup for you. Hey, that'd be great, you homo. Baby, you don't understand what you need to do. This is supposed to be funny. You yeah. will need to grease my palm if you want some coffee brew. Hey, wait a second. I thought you were the lovable, Toadie, and, and we're going to get us all coffee, yeah. but, but all you want is money. You're not as dumb as you look. <laughs> oh my God. Now you know what it's about. Barney, the red-nosed toady, wants to make some cash before you tell me to get out. Barney, get out of here. All right, fine. <laughs> wow, you're a good but actor. You know, this means that Barney, the red-nosed toady, won't be bringing you coffee this year. You've been a naughty disc jockey. Oh, whatever. Man. Later, Barney. Stick that nose up your ace. So that's how a lot of those uh, radio bits work. Yeah. Boy, that is just hysterically funny. Man, if I heard that on the way to work in my car, I'd be laughing so hard. I'd, I, I would drive off the road, Anthony. <laughs> and they don't understand. They call me every week saying, why won't you sign up for our service? Because it blows. You were pretty good fitting uh, your lines in. Thank you. You didn't step on them, but maybe two or three times, and there wasn't a huge, long, awkward gap. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Black Crows, kicking my heart around from their CD, By Your Side, which is coming out, I think, in early January at this point. January 12th. Thank you, Ben. January 12th. Hey, Ben, you want to talk about your little weekend? Everyone's laughing. Uh, the whole radio station heard it. Maybe the Opie and Anthony listening audience should hear it. After the uh, party. Wow. Why, Ben? Why are you turning red, Ben? Wow, look, look how, how red, red he you just are. got. You're, you're as red as a tomato. Woo! I must say, uh, before Ben tells his uh, little story here, we're giving away uh, Black Crows box sets all weekend long with a chance to win a trip to Atlanta to see the Black Crows. Keep listening for, for details. But uh, on Friday... We had the NEW slash wins Christmas party. Mm -hmm. It was a huge success. Yes, it was. And then uh, Ben decided that... Um, <laughs> I decided to go out yeah, after you, the party. Yeah, go out. All right. Out. Well, we all went to Mustang Sally's. I not to be that. confused with Mustang uh, Harry's. Oh, we went to Harry's. Oh, we went to Harry's and not Sally's? <laughs> 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 They're right next to each other. <laughs> and everyone was confused. Because we were all hammered, and we were supposed to meet at uh, Harry's? Sally's. Sally's. <laughs> but we all... <laughs> get, where were, where were we you? went to Harry's. <laughs> where were you, Opie? But we all stood out outside, and we went over as a group and said, are we supposed to be at Sally's or Harry's? <laughs> <laughs> Idiots, we're all together. Let's just go right here. <laughs> Yeah, and we did. And we did. Had a great time. Watched uh Oh, we got to talk about that, too. 
Watch the couple then pretty much just have to wait uh, now. Okay. get it on in a booth. Now we're at Mustang Larry's, right? <laughs> Harry's. <laughs> Mustang Harry's. Harry's, yes. Okay. And uh, we're all standing by the bar having uh, having some drinks. And we, 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 who looked over first? Was um, it? It wasn't me. Was it you, Mark? No. No. I don't even know who it was. Somebody just went, hey, check that out. Yeah. And I look at the booth, and there's a guy and a girl in the booth. Just going at it. Going at it. I mean, the girl's shirt was unbuttoned. The guy's hand was in her shirt. Mm -hmm. Her hand was on his crotch. And they were tanked, just drunk, going at it. Just and we kept, like, like trying to look like you're not looking. Yeah, at first, we're, like, uh, we're, we're uh, taking peeks around a pole and stuff because we didn't want to, you know... Look like the losers. It was so obvious, though, that everybody was looking because then people all around the bar pretty much huddled around their table. Yeah, at first it was very, uh, everyone was very careful when they were taking their peaks, and by yeah. the end of the night, about an hour later, they, th there was a scalper selling, you know, front row seats. <laughs> 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 and this was all at uh, Mustang Barry's or whatever that place is. <laughs> Harry's. We Harry's, to, right. I Larry's. Yes. Yeah, right. So what happened to Ben? Well, that's, that's it with that story? Well, you know, we, yeah, I guess, you, you I see guess that. we've all been in that situation. The bars, it was fun. It, it, the funny part was the couple had, they thought they were getting away with something. Like, look, man, no one is, no one is, uh, you know, t paying attention to us. I want yeah. you to uh, grab my, <laughs> grab my package for a little while. <laughs> no, we're all watching. <laughs> all right, so Ben, you left the party and you didn't go to Mustang uh, no, Harry's. No. Where'd you go? I, uh, Why are you turning red again, man? <laughs> Look I'm how traumatized, you are. man. I had a traumatizing experience. <laughs> all right, what happened? Okay. Well, we'd all been drinking at the Christmas party, as we know, and Buddy and I just decided I had the bright idea to go to uh, a large nightclub mm -hmm. uh, that's known for, you know, strange activity. So we, we arrived in the, the nightclub there about, I don't know, 1230. We noticed these three women, you know, you know, dressed very well and dancing together and and you know going at it and so so to speak my uh, my friend Decker approached them start dancing that with them and you know feeling that now so are these ladies hot yeah, they were very hot well endowed very, oh yeah you're I thinking mean, you're doing well oh, right yeah. okay I think we're doing very well everything's going really well we convinced them to leave with us which I blown away after like a half an hour to get out of the you know nightclub go to the bar gee I wonder where this is going. <laughs> So I noticed when we go to the coat check that their voices weren't, you know, they kind of had like guys' voices. Like, oh. They had guy voices. Oh, just thinking, oh. But they're good-looking women, so you know. For sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess they had said something. I, I missed this. Said something. They said something to my my friend, and I, I wasn't paying attention. Or I wasn't standing right there, and uh, so I walked out of the out of the tunnel there with, with you know, two of them on my arm and every guy's looking at them, checking them out, so I'm like, all right, this is pretty good. So you think you're pretty much uh, hitting it off set, like a, a you know, supermodel or something, yeah, right? Yeah, and my friend... But Decker they had manly like, voices when they you got their coat. Voices, oh. but they had oh, women's bodies. So, so oh. when, Ben, did you find out that they had a slot? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right to the point here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we well, arrived... Let's at, jump ahead in your cute we, little story. We, yeah. we, uh, we were talking at the bar about how we had met. I was with with uh, one of them, my friend was off with the other one, and she said, "Well, that's great that you don't have any problem with uh, transsexuality." Ah! Oh. And she goes, "You're not getting freaked out," and I was totally freaked out at this moment. Wait, 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 wait! You can stop <laughs> saying she now. Yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> he, uh, he. There was no bulge or anything, and, you know. And I asked her how. I said, "Well, technology or he or whatever you want to call it." I said, "Technology is pretty great because I would have never known." She said, "Well, or he, we would find out if we had gotten intimate." So at that moment. <laughs> Uh, uh, so I've been traumatized uh, all weekend. You were hanging so out with a chick with nuts. I realized what was going on. No way. About I, 45 minutes. I say they were making out in the cab. There was no touch. I was in the front of the cab. <laughs> hand on the leg. Hand on the leg. No, they were more touchy feeling. Ah! A guy touched you. Oh, man. Where did they Rah. touch you? Just on the leg and just like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> on your leg. A guy touched you. Wow. Leg. I didn't know oh. at the time. I didn't know that. You had a date with Murray. <laughs> So so all right, he's rubbing your leg, and and what were you doing? Did you guys shower together in the morning? No. <laughs> because I, I I'm onto something here, and I know this. If if 
he, she, whatever, is yes. rubbing your leg, and at this and point, and you still think it's a chick, you are not going to just sit there. You're going to respond. Right. No, I was sitting. I was Where'd you touch her? Why weren't you touching? Really Why weren't you touching? The, these I, hot girls that you're talking about, she's rubbing your leg, and you're sitting there doing nothing. And you still don't know at it's this a guy. Point, to be, this is, no, when the voice was starting to freak me out, and I noticed that, that she had a lot of makeup on under her lip. <laughs> Or above her lip. I started to suspect something. <laughs> but you still let her rub your leg. For a little while. <laughs> oh, classic, man. You know, when I was on all fours, I started to suspect something. <laughs> She's a man, baby. <laughs> all right, cute story, man. Oh, Ben. Wow. Pitcher or catcher? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't have to come in here and tell everybody about this today. I, Notice I, he didn't sit down during the whole story. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to. <laughs> oh, That's story, good, man. That's yeah. great. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. We appreciate yeah. it. So what do you what do you think of Ralph? <laughs> <laughs> Walking in. <laughs> yeah, did they have a mustache like Ralph has a mustache? <laughs> All right. On the way, we got uh, John Fogarty and the Wallflowers next. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. John Fogarty and the Wallflowers. Before that, it's Opie and Anthony for the ride home. Hey. Getting a bunch of requests today, Anthony. Yes. For uh, two bits. One is Yoshi the Pork Man. Uh, the lovely little Christmas song that the Pork Man did last week on our radio show. Very haunting, yes. Uh, so we'll play that. If you haven't heard it yet, you definitely want to stick around for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm proud to say that people are requesting the I Stole Stuff from Your Hotel bit. Now, you played that very late in the show last week. So uh, this would be a good time to get it on. Okay. Yes. Johnny Lang, lie to me on The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. On the way, Days of the New, Pink Floyd as well. And we're going to leave the show tonight with the gerbil song because we're getting a ton of requests for that. So uh, I just want to make sure you get your tape player set and ready to go so you can get a copy of that because uh, we listen to you guys when you send the email. Yes, we do. I guess people are starting to bootleg a lot of the, the wacky uh, little bits and stuff that we do. We don't care. No, we we appreciate that. Spread the word. We could use all the help we could get. At least it's somebody uh, putting uh, tapes of us out there. Our record company doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Anthony, be nice. Well, we keep getting calls from people going, guys, where can I get your CD? And what do we have to say? Uh, we don't know. No, we don't know. And is it because we don't talk to our record company? No, we speak to them probably uh, weekly. Mm-hmm. And nothing ever happens. And now that we're playing the Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer song from Opie and Anthony's The Meta World, now people really want the CD in time for Christmas. And uh, uh, a record company gave us the great news last week that they shipped <laughs> another 80 units. 80 they units. They actually call us to tell us this. Like, like this is going to make us excited. Yeah. 80. How, how many people could listen to NEW on a weekly basis, would you guess, Anthony? Oh, God. I, could, I couldn't even begin to think. A couple million different people? Yeah. Okay. And, all right, obviously not everyone into us. Let's say a small percentage. Let's say maybe 1% of the people oh, okay. might be interested in uh, purchasing an Opie and Anthony Domino World CD. Maybe. Maybe oh. it, it's in the back of their mind like, well, you know, if I saw that, maybe I would buy it. All right. So what's 1% of 2, mi two million? Uh-oh. 2,000. 200,000, 200, right? 1%? No. It's no. 2,000. 20,000. Two. Oh my God! We're retarded. What's one percent of two million? <laughs> it's it's twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty. 20, 20 okay. 000. All right. All right. For sake of argument, twenty thousand people out there might be interested in buying our CD. Let's read. So why would the record company ship eighty units? Eighty <laughs> units, Opie. And that's conservative numbers. I'm sure there's a lot more than 20,000 people that would be interested in picking up our CD in the New York area. If, if our math is right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was great at math, too. I'm pathetic. I got screwed up with the decimal point there. You know what's interesting, too? How many, hmm. how many units could a record store... I mean, how many record stores are there? Uh, oh, in Manhattan? Gee, it can't be that many. Yeah. Well, right? Maybe like two or three. Like half of one or something? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's one CD per ten record stores. Well, whatever. 
All right. With that said, I'm a, I've also made a lot of people money over the weekend. Hey, oh. It, oh, Andrew doesn't like to be on the air. But it's a math question. What is what is what is one percent of two million? Ah, uh, oh. twenty twenty thousand. Right? Twenty thousand. All right. Yeah. All right. I, I think it's. Yeah, 20,000. I think the phones would have went crazy because when people have an opportunity to yell at us and say we're wrong, they'll call up. So, Rick, answer the phone. See if someone's got the right answer. Okay. It is. All right. Um, yeah, I, I made a lot of people uh, money. How'd you do that? On Friday, I, I was brave enough to go on the radio. Not many people in this town were brave enough to oh, do this. Please. And I bet you 100 bucks that the yeah. Giants would uh, would beat the spread against the Broncos. Yeah. And I also hinted that they would, they might just win as well. Big whoop. Ooh, they win a game. Ooh. Well, I, I don't see my hundred bucks. I'll get it to you. Line up. It was yesterday. You should have been prepared to bring in my hundred dollars. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't stop off at the bank after the game. <laughs> on the way in. Hi, Andy W. Yeah, Obi Anthony. Yes. Yeah, we're uh, just wanted to know who uh, Anthony's going to pick tonight uh, for tonight's Monday night game after Zoom dot com and uh, and Denver. Who's he going to pick tonight so I can bet on the other team? <laughs> ah, you <laughs> bet. <laughs> paying up the hundred bucks? No, he didn't pay me yet. Okay. Oh man, give me a break! Oh, come he on, picks, well, I didn't bring it in with me. He picks up. He picks the worst team in a year, and he comes up with the only the money. Come on. <laughs> Unbelievable. And his Zoom.com is now down to 22. He bought it five days ago at 38. <laughs> oh, baby. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, you guys are great, man. Keep it up. Hey, thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, you're taking it on the chin. What Zoom close at 22 today? Zoom.com, I think it was 21 and change. <laughs> You've lost 17 points on that stock already. Yeah, boy. Getting to those internet stocks. Woo! <laughs> Woo! I'm the sap that gets into the pyramid schemes right before they crumble. Your buddies all tell you how they made 20 grand on their $1,000 investment in the pyramid schemes. Remember that? I sure do. I was like working washing dishes at Chicago Pizza Pub. <laughs> and my life savings is a grand. I fork it over to some guy. I know, it was always for the dream guy. of twenty thousand dollars in a matter of days. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I I get the call. Oh man. <laughs> Pyramid collapsed. <laughs> Colla what do you mean collapse? What what do you mean? No, you know, couldn't support uh, the weight of everybody else that was taking money out. All right, well, you know, where can I pick up my money? Oh no, you don't get your money back. <laughs> you see that I had to go out to uh, uh, that's me. Well, then over this uh, over the weekend, you were talked into the fifty dollar um, Christmas tree stand. I, I blew fifty bucks on a Christmas tree stand. <laughs> For some reason, I need this Star Trek Christmas tree stand with gear teeth and foot pedals. It's got a foot pedal. It's a Christmas tree stand with a foot pedal. Can this thing mow your lawn as well? I <laughs> hope so. It better do something the rest of the year. It's I. Paid more for my stand than I did the tree. <laughs> I should turn the whole rigmarole upside down. That should be the top of my tree. Ugh. Should be the Christmas tree stand. All right. And then, yeah, I, I picked Denver. Silly me. Ooh, go figure. <laughs> Denver over the Giants. What a going out on a limb there, Anthony. Ooh. And what happens? They lose. Yep. And then your Zoom.com. Don't forget that. <laughs> Zoomed right into the ground. So at this point... Zoom into the ground. So at this point, Anthony, everyone is patiently waiting for your pick tonight, Monday Night Football. Let me get into all the facts. It's the Niners against the Lions. Yeah, I know. I know. Niners, 10-point favorite. Uh-huh. What do you think? Niners all the way. And they'll cover the spread? Oh, yeah. Niners? Yeah. And, and you'll give the 10 points? I'm not stupid, of course. Rick, call my bookie. 100 on the Lions tonight. <laughs> I'm not stupid. All right, we'll see how you do uh, with this pick. All right. Anthony, cigars around the world. The original Cigar of the Month Club. They gave us some samples last week. You went home this weekend and you tried uh, one of them, right? I was a player for the weekend, Opie. I was smoking the cigars. Celebrating all your uh, latest winnings, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Celebrating the Broncos victory over the weekend and celebrating the fact that uh, Zoom.com went through the roof. Well, see, this made me feel better. It made me feel like a player. Even though I was down, I lost everything I invested in uh, this week as far as football and, and stocks go. I could sit Christmas back tree stands. with a cigar from Cigars Around the World. $50 for a Christmas tree. And I felt like Damn. a player. Okay. For the, the time that cigar was lit, and I, 
I'm puffing. I felt like a player. And it really was good, huh? Yeah. Okay, and you got that from Cigars Around the World. Yep. For only twenty four ninety five per month plus shipping, Cigars Around the World sends five fresh hand-rolled cigars, a smoking newsletter, free cigar cutter, gift card, and more. And they got some great memberships. You get uh, anywhere from two to 12-month memberships available. Just call 1-800-FRESH-66. Also, they have a wide array of fine accessories such as humidors, lighters, ashtrays, books, and much more. Call today to place an order or receive a catalog. Call 1-800-FRESH-66. 1027-WNEW, the Rock of New York. James Gang, Days of New, before that, the Downtown, and Pink Floyd, too. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> Everyone is uh, betting on the Lions tonight now because Anthony has made his prediction for Monday Night Football. <laughs> well, <laughs> what can I say? So, everyone is taking the Lions and the 10 points. You know, I'm not uh, the only one that thought Denver was going to win. You know, it's not so out there that I was saying Denver's going to win, Opie. Right, I know that. But, yeah. you, but you also lost a shirt, on, you know, with the stock market. And what? I had a couple of dollars on, on Zoom.com. A couple? And he, it zoomed into, <laughs> into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple. How about those Internet stocks? I got in a little too late, didn't you? I, <laughs> I saw the boat, and I missed it. So not only did you uh, 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 incorrectly... Uh, <laughs> vote against the uh, Broncos. Well, I thought or, the Broncos were going to win. I mean, to vote and, against the Giants. And the Giants uh, finally decide maybe they're going to play yeah. and uh, they win a game. All right. Well, now, you bought Zoom.com at what price? What? <laughs> um, I did get into Zoom.com at $38 a share, Opie, okay. yes. And what did it close today? Uh, <laughs> if I check, it's somewhere a little over 21 <laughs> <laughs> In how many days? <laughs> three. <laughs> Are you serious? Three days and went down 17 points? Oh, it's a mess, that thing. You're not kidding? So that's why everyone is uh, taking the lines of the 10 points tonight, because you said that the Niners are going to win and cover the spread tonight. <laughs> I thought it was another uh, uh, Amazon.com. Well. What happened? Sorry to hear that. Huh? Try For the, God's sake. Try the oil companies, Anthony. <laughs> Oil's a very good investment. They're very low right That's now. That's what a lot of people have been telling us lately. Very low. I don't know. Ben, don't laugh over there. Yeah, Ben. <laughs> Look at Ben. Uh, you feel therapy. better? That was my therapy. You feel better for letting it out, Ben? Um, well, let's just say he came out of the closet earlier. I did not come out of the closet. <laughs> you know, most people trying to become members of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club <sighs> on Tuesdays. Ben has officially become part of the... Uh, Homosexual community. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Now you're burying him. Now, he, earlier he came in and explained I, that after the Christmas party on uh, Friday and, night. And, Ben, I must say, you were pretty damn trashed. Yeah, I was. Yeah. He he went to this bar and picked up these hot chicks. <laughs> and then, for some reason, went down to the village with them. <laughs> and uh, he, found, he found out that... Um, Jiminy Cricket, Jeepers Creepers, they were men. <laughs> they were <laughs> they were chicks with nuts. <laughs> and the best sexuals. And the best sexuals. And the best line uh They weren't trans what were they? Transvestites? Transsexuals. Or transsexuals. Transsexuals. They're, they're you don't know. A lot of transvestites tell you they're no, transsexual. They had, you know, they had boobs. I mean they had, you know. Big, you know. That's called breast implants. Yeah, but I mean, uh, <laughs> the best line. Ben goes, "Hey, man, I knew I was doing great because like I was hanging out with the girls in the bar, and then we left the bar, and like everyone was staring at us. <laughs> they were staring at you because you were the idiots that <laughs> leaving with the men. Leave with the men. <laughs> the men in dresses. They weren't staring at you because wow, look at that lucky guy going home with that supermodel. <laughs> uh, you were too trash to realize that five o'clock shadows. And what did you say earlier about the makeup? When, well, there's a little bit of makeup on those. You know. I didn't realize. No, 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 no. no, no. What did what you say mean? earlier, Ben? What did I say earlier? I don't remember. What you want I us say? to pull the tape? You said there, there was a lot of makeup under there their was. nose. There was a lot of makeup, but I didn't realize that until we got into the other place with more light. Why do you think someone <laughs> would put a lot of makeup I... under their nose? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you didn't have any makeup on you after the night was over, did you? No. All right. Just wondering. I know that you said the, the guy was rubbing your leg at one point in the bar before you realized that it was a man. And um, 
for 45 minutes, for some reason, I think... <laughs> I know if a girl is rubbing my leg in a bar for 45 minutes, I'm going to make a move in that time. Because you know you're in, right? Oh, am I right? Of course you're right. So now this guy is rubbing your leg. You think it's a chick. And then you don't do anything? I didn't. I think you touched. I did not. I did not. I know. I'm out of us. <laughs> the crying game. Oh. I know more. The crying game. Oh. Uh, so I've been traumatized for this one. I guess. I know. You know, I, oh, wow, you should, poor ben. you should confess right now in our show that you actually made out with a guy. I did not make out with a guy. Because not, Anthony uh, makes a good ben. point with the. Uh, <laughs> Buy me a drink, Ben. I really like you. You know, uh. Girls like me don't meet guys like you a lot. What's this? Mm, touch my leg. Yeah, Ben, did you get a... Yeah, did you get a Woody when she was touching your leg? Yeah, we... We, do, we you starting you? to think, yeah, this is good. I mean... Did you feel man. some stimulation I, down there? Be honest. I, I probably could have, yes. I probably... What do you mean, oh, could? I no. I excited what do you mean? by a man. I didn't know it was a, a man. man. Point, I didn't know it was a man. All right. This morning. So when the guy was rubbing your leg, did you or did you not get I'm excited? Sure I probably did. Now by I leg, remember, I, are you talking knee, no, uh, upper knee, thigh? No, it, it didn't go. There was some thigh no. action, right? Yeah, some thigh action. Ah. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't and you sat there thighs. sitting on your hands? What, what were your hands doing? I had a Heineken in my hands. All right, there's Heineken. one hand. That wasn't a Heineken! <laughs> that was Bob! <laughs> That was no Heineken. <laughs> oh, God. oh, so you were sucking on a Heine. <laughs> <laughs> was it a long neck uh, Heineken bottle? Uh, For some reason, the bottle kept getting a long neck and then back down to a stubby. <laughs> so, uh, wh when I'm never gonna live this down. No, you're not. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You're never ben ever was, living. Ben was again. so excited about the story. He called me three times this weekend to tell me. It's a great story. It is a great story. How they, I mean, it just, I never thought... It's it was tragic. A, yeah, it's, it's a tragic. A cute little story. Listen, it could have been a lot worse. So, so when, so when, so when did the, it was. so when did this, <laughs> we, we know it was worse, but you're not going to confess to it. So when did this, um, <clears throat> girl break the news to you that she was a guy? Was it when you guys were both taking a leak in the bathroom? <laughs> As she was standing next to me at the urinal, I got a little suspicious. I really like you, Ben. You want to zip this up for me? Come on, confess more. Why? What do you want to know? I just know. Well, I just know. Now you have the Heineken in one hand, right? Now your other hand. You're close enough where she's got. He's got his hand on your leg. Now what's your other hand doing? You weren't. It was on the table. You didn't like maybe touch the shoulder a little and go. Wow, you're like a linebacker. You didn't touch the shoulder and, you know, nothing. No contact. You had no contact. In 45 minutes thinking this was a girl with I her didn't. hand on your leg, you didn't even the touch The most contact her. I had was when we walked out. I told you I had two of them on each arm. That was oh, oh, my God. What? You oh. told me you okay, hugged a couple. Of them. I did. I hugged one of them. That's right. I hugged the one with the fake, the huge fake. Boobs in front of the bank machine. I hug. This was the hug, and then what? A little peck on the cheek, no, maybe. No, when they went to kiss me, when they left, when I realized their guy. I put my head down, so they got my hair, and they're like, "You're not gonna let us kiss you." I was like, "No way!" At that oh. point, he was a homo sandwich. I am, <laughs> I am far from a homo. Oh man, I came close this weekend, but I, <laughs> you better get those glasses checked, man. Yeah, I mean, come on. How much were you drinking that night? <laughs> that you would leave with two Wait men. Second. Not even one guy. <laughs> three. He left with th three, three guys. <laughs> you left with three guys. Oh, it was myself and my friend Decker. And, you know, well, we, at the time, I thought there were three girls. Do you realize if they wanted to assault you, one would have to sit and wait while the other two finished? <laughs> Listen, like you would... back on it, it's a... <laughs> You, know, you were in that much though? trouble where all three of them couldn't even do it at the same time. One would have to sit back and wait. Three men. Start slow. You know, what are you doing? You don't enter the gay community with three guys. You're going to kill yourself. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah, man. Most guys, they start dating. You oh, know, they start on. off slow. Maybe. But you do. Oh, Ben. Jesus. I'm going full out. I want three men. <laughs> and, and you know something? There's that one in a million tranny <laughs> that you look at and go, all right, he's pulling it off. Yeah. Kind of looks like a chick. Yes. But when you have three in the same bar, one is going to look like Murray. <laughs> You know, or Bob. I, and you said that they had the deep voices and stuff. Well, that was the, yeah. You didn't notice I, that? I had suspicions. I definitely had suspicions, but I didn't notice. Suspicions. Look, I, <laughs> Jesus. It's Ben Curious. <laughs> I'm Ben Curious. <laughs> I've switched. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's, it's Ben over. <laughs> I'm switching. I'm switching stations now. Yeah, go over to Q. <laughs> Perfect fit. company over there. Yeah, you'll fit right in. All right, <laughs> All right very good. Once again, right. Ben. Uh, Thank thanks you, for Ben. Abusing me. Once Thank again, you. you haven't proven it anything. I know. I, I still think a lot more happened on that I, oh, bar stool or table nothing. when uh, she's touch. He's touching your leg, and you do nothing. I, I, I can't accept that. I told you I hugged the other ones. That is true. In front of the bank machine with the big boobs. <laughs> you hugged a guy. Okay, that's cute. I even had huge boobs. How is he poking me in the stomach when I see both of his no, hands? He was, we asked him that when question. He's he said, me. "Where is it?" Because there was no balls. Yeah, wait, well, you were still hanging out after you figured it out. <laughs> I mean, that not enough is. You know, that was when I watched the other guys. I have left an screen. outline of my body like Bugs Bunny running uh, out of a building. Well, no, no, no. You heard what my friend Decker said when he called in. He said, I came over, look, white as the coast, and said, I had to get out of here. I needed to talk to him about what was going on. I freaked out when I figured out what was going on. You hung out. Though. I mean, I, if you'd hang out, well, so, you know. At he that point, Ben, you, you just cut, cut your, your losses. losses and get the hell out of here. Oh, and you know. he wanted to know where his penis was. Oh, hey, yeah. He was fascinated with all this stuff. At the fascinating. Point. So where did he tell you? It was, Ben. He never answered his that question. Where it was isn't important. Where it could be is. <laughs> <All right. laughs> could have been a lot worse. All right. <laughs> Where are you going tonight? Cruising the glory hole? Yeah, where, like, uh, uh, come on. where are you going? <laughs> therapy? I'll be uh, therapy. hanging out at the mine shaft tonight. <laughs> then I'm going to pile drivers. <laughs> Come on, wait a second. Hey, what? Now everybody thinks I'm a homo. Everybody looks like you. Well, no, we understand you're just a confused young man. Uh, I, 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 I'm a little taken aback that after it was learned that they were guys, that you still, um, you know, hung out and, and kissed them. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. One from Tracks, Bruce Springsteen, Leaving Train. Bruce oh. Springsteen and the E Street Band uh, touring in 1999. We're all just patiently waiting for uh, ticket info on that. I saw the Bruce Legends on VH1. Oh, how was that? I haven't seen that yet. Pretty good. I like that Legends thing. It's uh, even if if they they play artists that you don't like, you end up kind of liking them. It's like oh, I, I kind of like the new kids on the block. <laughs> that was really good. I feel like I know them now. Oh, this man. weekend I saw uh, Queen, mm -hmm. U2, mm -hmm. and Springsteen. Pretty good. Insightful. Now, you're not a U2 fan, so how no. did you like that one? I, I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool how they started out, a bunch of just, you know, punk kids and everything, and uh, kept it together. You know, you got to respect them for that. Changing the music a little bit at the end of the 80s, able to pull that off. And they I have a newfound respect for But them. they didn't even know how to play their instruments at first. They were really yeah. not that good at, no, at, at playing. They wanted to do cover tunes when they first got together, but they were so bad they didn't know how to play other people's songs. So they just made up their own. It's pretty cool. Cool. I enjoyed it. I was busy watching the Evil Knievel last night. In between the Jets-Dolphins uh, <laughs> game, I had to switch back and forth. I didn't know what to do for a while there. What did they have? One of those? Uh... Uh, I think it was Celebrity Profile. Yeah, right. All, all, this, all these shows are the same, but they have different names. Different Behind name. the Music, Celebrity Profile. Legends. Legends. I, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but it was on Evil Knievel, and it was just so cool. Evil. A fixture of the 70s. Well, he's dying, you know. He needs yeah. a liver transplant. Uh, he's got hepatitis C, which is like the worst form of hepatitis. He needs a liver very sooner he's going to die, Ooh. which was kind of bum uh, a bummer, you know? Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, always Sur watching him. Yeah, survived all those crashes, and now, look, he's going out because uh, he can't get a liver in time. But uh, My favorite was the rocket. No, it wasn't a rocket. rocket. It, was a, it was a sky cycle. 
What? It was a rocket. What do you mean? No, man. It was the Evil Knievel Sky Cycle. Sky <laughs> Cycle. That's what it was. <laughs> That's what he called when it. When he jumped Snake River Canyon. He got into a rocket. That was a... No. It was a Sky Cycle. <laughs> Were there wheels on it? Uh, well, no. But... <laughs> That's no cycle. He called it the Sky Cycle. I had a Sky Cycle when I was growing up. My parents had to get me one because <laughs> of the Snake River Canyon jump. And how did they explain how the shoot came out? Well, uh, there was a book written uh, a few years back by his ex-marketing uh, director or yeah. publicist. And he claims that uh, Evil knew he was in an S-load of trouble and decided that the only way to survive that was to just pull the shoot immediately. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's the rumor that yeah. Evil actually pushed the switch. But He'd have ended up splattered in the middle of the canyon if he didn't do that. But know what was interesting? I never saw this before, and I'm a big fan of Evil Knievel. Uh, back in, I think it was 1965, when he was just a regular stuntman like everyone else, and he would go around the country and do some of these stunts. One of his famous stunts is uh, he stands on a racetrack yeah. and, and allows motorcycles and cars to race at him, right. and they're going about 50, 50 miles an hour. And he would jump up in the air just in time, and the bike or the car would go under him before he, you know, he landed down. So he's not on a motorcycle or anything? He's just standing there? No, this was one of his earlier stunts before he became the Evil Knievel. This was wow. like in the late 60s, mid-60s, whatever. And uh, they showed footage of Evil taking a handlebar to the groin because he miscalculated the, 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 you know, the jump. Ouch. He went 15 feet up in the air, flipping all over the place, landed on his back. Oh. Now he needs a liver? Yeah. From what? From the like, game. how did he get it? Uh, well, uh, they said because of all the operations and the blood, oh, transfusion. blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. But he could just need the liver from all the whiskey he drank. Yeah, as well. he was a sauced up guy all the time. But if you get the chance, you know, watch the celebrity profile in Evil Knievel. It's amazing. Mm, it, was, it was so freaking cool. Play the guy defied death so many damn times. Yeah. I just love all those shows because you, you could learn more about anybody than you ever could in history now. Just flipping through the channels. Oh, another show on Hitler on the History Channel. I like A&E Biographies. One of my favorite shows. What no angle am I going to get I'll even here? watch A&E Biography on Kathy Lee Gifford just because I hate her and she's just yeah. useless to me. But I don't know. They make it interesting. Yeah, that biography show is, is pretty damn cool. Yeah. You know? So, <laughs> all right. We told everyone we'd leave with the gerbil song here. Okay. But, uh, hey, thanks for listening. We really appreciate the support. We know you're out there. Yes, thank you. We're going to start cuddling our faithful listeners because <laughs> we need your help, you know.